sitting on an alluvial plain formed by the Jinzu and Joganji rivers and sandwiched between the Japanese Alps and the Japanese Sea. 2119 Toyama boasts a population of 2 million people. Meaning rich with mountains, Toyama's traditional geographic isolation led to a robust entrepreneurial economy with innovations in high-tech robotics, nuclear, electrical and solar engineering, and pharmaceutical industries. This city of medicine became the world's elixir of resiliency due to its cultural heritage, compact city planning, and smart microgrid technologies. Living the Confucian ideal realization of self and others makes our citizens the heart of Toyama's resiliency and is exemplified by government-supported center city living that bonds our elderly to our youth. Toyama's infrastructure is highlighted by clean, sustainable, and resilient energy and waste management solutions that provide multiple benefits. The Shirawa Sabu Dam produces hydroelectricity, but also controls river flooding by releasing water into rice paddy fields or the Matsukawa underground water retention system. Geothermal heating drawn from our magma chambers in Mount Tate supply heating for our city buildings and Mount Snow on our mountain roads. Locally generated and consumed power sources form microgrids that can work independently from the overall grid. Waste is managed through Toyama's Ecotown program, a government initiative that educates the public to reduce, reuse, and recycle, and showcases new technologies like Kankyo Saibi's plastic regeneration facility and waste to energy incinerators, as well as the Omni processor, which converts human waste into energy, ash fertilizer, and even clean drinking water. City services are highlighted by Toyama's educational philosophies and disaster response initiatives. Beginning in elementary school and throughout adulthood, Toyama instills the Japanese philosophies of Jijio, self-help, Jojio, mutual help, and Kojio, public help, to nurture resilience in individuals and to promote public service. Post-secondary education at Toyama University features engineering internships with companies like Nachi Fujikashi Corporation, a manufacturing company whose products help to manage and monitor our infrastructure. Toyama's disaster training and awareness program uses regional leaders to disseminate information and educate volunteers, monitor local conditions and forecasts, coordinate emergency rescues, manage shelters, and evaluate results. Compact City Design, CCD, lies at the heart of Toyama's resiliency plan. CCD consists of three phases. Phase one, establish a compact city around efficient public transportation and concentrate residential living and city services within easy access to transportation. City planning begins along centrally located former light rail lines where autonomous private next pods can link together like a mass transit system to transport citizens throughout the heart of the city. Along major transportation arteries, high-rise residential neighborhoods place our citizens within convenient access to the city's amenities. Phase two, revitalize downtown historical resources, including the Toyama Castle, High Shrine, Grand Plaza, and the Glass Art Museum to promote economic development around our shared heritage. Phase three, improve energy generation and distribution. And this phase solved our problem, which was flooding from excess winter snowfall, spring meltings, and historical rainfalls, which threatened lives and damaged our city's infrastructure. Short-term damage included swollen rivers, washed out roads, power outages, and threats to vulnerable populations. Excessive costs for ongoing infrastructure repair and damage done to residential living, commercial businesses, and tourist attractions were all long-term problems. Using the engineering design process, we defined our problem, which was flooding flood. threatens our city's infrastructure and power grid. For specifics, we need to come up with solutions that managed any flooding that overwhelmed our dam. Our brainstormed solutions included diverting water into enhanced underground infrastructure. As for design, we enhanced Toyama's centralized planning and underground infrastructure initiatives with microgrids, underground power lines, and new energy generation solutions, including solar roadways and layered decentralized optimization or LDO architecture. Finally, we tested our solutions, particularly our water management systems, with prototypes. And now, here we are sharing this scale model with you. LDO architecture is a microgrid, bottoms-up approach that manages energy supply and demand at the local level. Capable of working independently from the transmission grid, autonomous local energy producers and stores, called distributed energy resources, within each microgrid generate the majority of Toyama's energy needs. 
Axis energy is exchanged upward at a single point of contact in transformer stations where a high voltage travels within three phase transmission lines in trenches along our solar roadways. Our solar roadways are constructed with piezoelectric plates and photovoltaic paint, which generate electricity from sunlight and moving vehicles. A strong layer of shatter resistant glass houses sensors, LEDs, and any other electronics. Our quantum communication systems provide instant emergency notifications throughout our city's infrastructure. QCS sensors monitor vibrational changes and fluctuations in electrical output, energy flow, and level throughout our power grid and water management infrastructure. QCS directs LEDs and roadway solar tiles to inform the public safely direct traffic and provide priority access to rescue workers. Our solutions provide a multitude of benefits, safer and more efficient transportation, energy distribution and consumption, emergency management, a scalable, locally controlled and optimized power grid, a cleaner environment, a revitalized downtown with increased public transit usage, less traffic, more time efficiency, a more cultured and educated citizenship, and increased tourism. To our utilized biomechanical, mechatronic, and electrical engineers to design, develop, and program photovoltaic cells, algae biofuels, solar roadways, and microgrids. Automotive engineers designed our NextPod transportation network. Civil and geotechnical engineers developed our compact city design, roadways, and underground storm management infrastructure. Our solutions, of course, came with some trade-offs. Inverting the grid structure with LDO architecture and installing solar roadways was a time-consuming and costly endeavor that led to short-term market fluctuations in energy prices. Excavation and solar tile installation disrupted traffic. Expanding storm drains and installing underground transmission lines, stations, and sensors at DER sites all added further cost and time. Toyama's engineers utilized compact city design with infrastructural innovations to make its city like its people. A, a model, model of, of resiliency. resiliency. All right, so I'd like you to think about today's power grid and, and think about what vulnerable vulnerabilities in today's power grid were addressed in your future city. So today's power grid uses uh, transmission lines that are suspended and those are very vulnerable to lots of natural disasters. In our power grid, we have three-phase transmission lines and trenches in our, along our solar roadways so they can survive flooding, earthquakes, tsunamis, etc. Instead of using one large power source, we used more localized microgrids and DRs, which are distributed energy resources, so that way we had less, um, less difficulty connecting our energy to consumers. Not to, pen not to mention, having independent microgrids allowed it for not as easy for cyber attacks to bring down our whole grid. They have to hack into each individual microgrid around our city, so once we figure out the ones being hacked into, we can have um, we're notified and then we can counterattack and defend our senses. In addition to the vulnerabilities, could you speak to the resilience of the system and the complexities of that? So if one microgrid grows, goes out, surrounding microgrids can support it with their electricity and central uh, power can uh, fill in the gap if there's a release in electricity with a microgrid. Yeah, our city needs a total of 1,000 um, megawatts of power, and by using um, all of our different en clean energy resources, we're able to always have some kind of resource to fill in the gap. Yes, we have lots of different um, energy sources that we can use, not to mention, if a grid were to temporarily go down, our QCS systems, quantum communication systems, provide instant emergency notifications, so we'll be able to instantly pinpoint that location so we can fix it, like, right away. Can you explain to us how many moving parts you have and what they are? Yeah. So, so we have three moving parts. Our first one would be our next pods, and these are large freight next pods. They can also be used to collect waste and for emergencies, and they rotate on a spinning track. Yeah, we have our water and flooding solutions over here. We run water through the Shiriwa Sabu Dam right here, and it's demonstrating how we would divert the access flooding water into the rice paddy fields or the Matsukawa underground storage facility. Our third moving part would be on the back of our model. If we could quickly flip that around. 
Our LDO architecture demonstrates our power distribution and how it goes through three phase transmission lines where the energy comes from multiple different DERs and everything. You use the term algae biofuels more than once in your presentation. Yeah. Can you expand on what that is and why it's different? So our algae biofuels are native to the Toyama Bay and it, is, it, we were, it was very important to us that we were able to um, find things that were localized. We were actually able to contact the Chief Resiliency Officer of Toyama Japan, Dr. Runzo Inada, and he spoke to us about finding um, solutions to your problems that were local, that were easy for you to get, and that covered more than one of your bases. Algae biofuels use the oil produced by algae and can also be used as a, another food source. And they're uh, very healthy and they are emission neutral, so they take in as much oxygen and CO they take in as much CO2 as they put out when they're burned. Our whole city is emission free as well. It doesn't emit any toxins to environment, so it's all very nice and sustainable and clean. Yeah. You mentioned how your city is quite compact. Can you expand on how you deal with some pollution problems? Yeah, so um, we do use a compact city design where we place our residents along our major transportation lines and close to the city's amenities. Um, as for pollution, we use um, all clean energy resources, and the fact that our citizens are located in a compact city design creates behavioral efficiency towards where they're like where they're going and if they're going to travel somewhere, it's very simple for them to get there. Yes, we use all energy, clean energy resources such as solar, electric, hydro, and other DER sites, as well as our nuclear fusion plant produces no emits, emits no pollution. Yeah, our compact city design lessens demand on transportation and we use our next pods to transport waste. Also, we have Ecotown, which deals with most of our waste, and it can uh, deal with human waste by turning it into electricity, ash fertilizer, and even clean drinking water. So can you expand a little bit on um, agricultural and food for, for, the, for the city, since it is such a compact city? So a majority of, we do from the, well, is that it? Okay.